Paul Graham is the co-founder of Y Combinator, the world's most successful startup studio. And his artistic background, combined with his technical genius, has helped him become one of the most successful writers and entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley. So how did this proudly self-proclaimed nerd who stopped watching TV at the age of 13, how did he find success while breaking convention? Who are you? All right, Paul Graham. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> and you're uh, the guy who runs Y Combinator. You just had, you just helped launch 36, or 39? 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 39, man. 36 is hard enough. Paul Graham developed his career and his identity by straddling two dichotomies. First, there was the technologist and the artist, and then there was the entrepreneur and the writer. It wasn't a stretch for Paul to wear any of these hats. He simply followed his own authentic interests, where he would just bounce between left brain and right brain realms of art and technology for years. It's what he did. It's what his interests were drawing him to. But as he built his tech career, he adopted the early habit of writing long form educational essays. The other kind of work I do is like writing essays, and I do that involuntarily. I'm like walking down the street and the essay starts writing itself in my head. Instead of writing about literature, like your average English class or something, he wrote about useful things, like how to start a startup and how to make wealth. And it was this synthesis of writing and educating other people that allowed him to integrate his smorgasbord of interests and eventually found Y Combinator. In 2005, which has now funded more than 2,000 startups, including Airbnb, Dropbox, Stripe, and Reddit. I'm Paul Graham. We are standing in front of Y Combinator, and we have just had Demo Day, which is where all the startups present to investors. All right, so this time we have 63 startups. Um, y Combinator itself is a trick. It's a mathematical trick for making a recursive function without a name. The idea is funding a whole bunch of startups at once. That's the unusual thing. Doing it but let's stop and pause and rewind and ask where did all of this begin? Graham studied philosophy at Cornell and then moved on to Harvard, where he earned a PhD in computer science. He also studied painting at the Rhode Island School of Design and then also at an art academy in Florence, Italy. And yeah, you hear that and you're like, wait, what? That's not the most typical or even the most logical educational path, especially for somebody who works in Silicon Valley. But that's what makes Paul Graham so unique. And in 1996, he and a guy named Robert Morris, they founded a tech company called ViaWeb, which allowed people to make their own internet stores. ViaWeb was then sold to Yahoo in 1998 for 455,000 shares of Yahoo stock, which was valued at almost $50 million at the time. But it was Paul Graham's essays in the years that followed that garnered viral attention. It's now a common practice in Silicon Valley to write essays where you share knowledge and then you gain status and create opportunities for yourself. But at the time, people of Paul's success level, they weren't really sharing their ideas for free online. People used to think of writers and operators like Paul Graham as separate with no overlap in the Venn diagram. But Graham was a pioneer and he continued this practice of writing in public even after he founded Y Combinator. But in the years following the sale of ViaWeb, Paul's essays began to gain traction. They had scintillating titles with nerdy, appealing, and applicable content. Titles like Fierce Nerds, Being a Noob, How Not to Die, Revenge of the Nerds, and Why Smart People Have Bad Ideas. And one time he wrote, and I quote, One thing I learned early on is that, on the internet at least, the title you give to an essay has a huge effect on its spread. One of his more popular essays, Hackers and Painters, also became the title of his book. And it's an apt metaphor for Paul's interest in the intersectional crisscross of art and technology. In this essay, Graham talks about his peers who were shocked and quite frankly taken aback by his choice to study painting after years of studying computer science. And he writes that people seem to think that being a painter was a very different kind of work from being a software programmer. And on the surface, it makes sense, right? Engineers are cold and precise and methodical. And then painting is driven by an intuitive and sometimes frenzied expression of some primal urge inside of us. 
But hackers and painters, they're both makers. And they're both obsessed with making good things. And Graham, he's a prolific maker himself. I went back and looked at his essays, and from 1993 to 2020, he published 188 essays on his website, telling some 500,000 words. And this massive body of work, it keeps Graham timeless. He's not writing topically or focused on the news of the day. He is writing things that are going to stand the test of time, and his site now gets around 25 million page views a year. And Y Combinator itself was launched as a way to expand startup education. And before that, Graham was expressing all the same ideas through his own writing. With his startup incubator, he synthesized ideas that he'd already written about and put them into practice. And then he got this great flywheel going where he was working with all these startups and learning new things. And then now he could start writing essays about the things that he was learning to help future entrepreneurs. Graham's creative generosity, his willingness to share ideas for free, by writing in public and sharing those ideas on the internet has made him the most important teacher in Silicon Valley. And you know what? If you want to dive into the mechanics of his writing process, check out this video that I made about how he writes his introductions.